hello guys welcome back in this video i am going to explain how to install arc linux step by step yeah if you feel it is very slow just change your video settings to times two so it will go a little bit faster so you can do it very quickly yeah the main thing why i'm telling that uh, i'm going very every basic command how to partition the disks how to install the grub how to install the uh, basic xfc desktop environment and then we're going to how to install the basic applications i'm dividing this one into two videos one is installing all the system including xfce and then we are going to another second video install basic applications on Arc Linux, which is used full for like Firefox and other applications. Okay, first thing first, why we have, why we need to install Arc Linux? We have a lot of distributions with a lot of easy installations, but still why we are using Arc Linux? I believe that installing Arc Linux is a turning point for most users. So they will understand everything, how actually Linux works, how the linux installation will work how we can configure you will get complete control of your operating system i know that may there is a lot of systems ubuntu debian there is a lot of systems you can install yourself with the gui stuff but still they will come with a lot of applications which is you're not using like windows and uh, Arc Linux is complete customizable. You can do anything. You can see that here. You can see that my screen on bottom. I can put anything, weather applications, network monitor, and it, I, that is only simple customizable. I did, but you can do a lot of customizations. And I another system. I did a lot of customizations. But here, another thing. It is very less weight. If you see that here, edge top. I am recording the video but still my system is using just 817 mb of ram and you can see that one threads are one or two running sometimes one sometimes two uh, threads 136 threads task 57 and one process running so you can see that very less usage of os and you don't need to install every software which one you don't need and Arc Linux is a rolling release. It, it it do not release every six months or maybe every two years like Debian. Maybe then after that like Ubuntu it released 24.04 now and they will release after six months another release. But they will follow the LTS every two years. But Arc Linux is not like that. It is a rolling release. So every time you will get latest versions of applications and you will fix your uh, security issues you can patch your applications very quickly but uh, there is a downside is also there that is sometimes some applications in not compatible with latest version of kernels so that's why you must follow the lts kernels is a long time kernels not like you don't need to you don't need to upgrade every time new kernel and that that will cause sometimes it break the system but I haven't seen any issue up to now for me. It never operating system never stops to booting into the OS. Maybe some application I experienced that, but not like that. Okay, so I I, I, I explain why we go to the Arc Linux. But this is this installation not for everyone. But if you are interested, if you want to enter into Linux world, you will this will help you very help you a lot a lot so you will understand everything in linux how it works so first thing we need to go to our linux.org then we can download uh, our os so you can see the right hand side window here download button when you click that you see that there is a torrent links also if you can torrent that you can you know you can download the your docker images and you can do your cloud images also so if you don't want if you don't want to do everything for yourself and otherwise you can download your nearest mirrors so i downloaded my image already and also 
if you see that if you go here sorry if you go any of these images you see that there is a iso image and the bottom one is signature i am highly recommending that please download this iso signatures i remember that is long mm, four years back in 2016 i think early 2016 uh some some of the hackers hacked the mint website in back from the back door and they changed the links to download the hack hacked iso image so nearly more mm, during next uh, after that when they replace after the two months people are downloaded those hacked iso images and they installed also so that's why i'm highly recommending please download those things and once you download you have to check your the uh, signature with that i will show the command how to check that so my images are in download folder and my uh, signature folder uh, file is also in my download folder so what we have to do we have to do this command gpg key server options auto key retrieve this is retrieve this auto key from the awk site and then verify this signature whatever the we verify with the iso image this signature so once you do that it will verify your iso image and assuming sign dot and iso image and then it will explain here good signature from so you must check these ones otherwise don't use that iso images for your installation and for this video i am installing this in oracle box and also i am using uefi mode so you can do the changes in UUFI mode. I will show you how to change the UUFI settings here. So, so you can install in the same way on your hardware also. The best, the thing is, I'm recommending you practice once with your virtual environment, anything VMware or virtual box, then you can start installing on your own system. But once you install, I'm promising you, you will love Arc Linux. First thing, okay, I'm starting the new machine here. New, I'm putting awk. Then I'm changing Linux to awk Linux 64. It's already selected itself. Next, so I'm changing to 2 gig. Yeah, then next, I'm changing. Next, create new virtual hard disk now. Create, it doesn't matter. If you want to import this one into, VMware just change your VMDK so you can play with that here and there and dynamically allocating the size and I'm changing this one to 40 gig I highly recommend it's a 40 gig is good for you is uh, if you want to play with it for some time or if you want to familiar with it and everything and then I'm going to change we need to change to UUFI thus I'm showing here you will see that here system motherboard you go here enable efi so special os only but those are latest points if you do not have hardware which is which do not support efi so you will boot in automatically into our linux installation you can follow from there so everything normal you don't need to change if you want you can enable nested utx just for practice and everything processes i'm increasing to two now yeah so everything fine if you want you can change to 128 this will give you rich graphical infrastructure and everything so that's it nat i'm using nat network i'm using nat okay that's it for now oh sorry i forgot to add the image here storage so i'm i downloaded this image yeah uh, disk file which is in my downloads Arc Linux ISO open okay so I'm starting the machine now start okay you will see that it's going to UEFI mode now okay guys it's boot enough everything is boot so we have to start installation of Arc Linux into our hard disk 
So first thing first, I will check image. Is everything available on that image or not? Just follow the command ls sys and firmware. You can press tab, it will automatically complete the command EFI tab EFI wars. So everything is there. You can see that everything those files. Normally you will see that this many files. And then I'm checking if you are doing on your own laptop, check that Wi-Fi. If sometimes your Wi-Fi will help you to connect on from your laptop. When you type this command Wi-Fi menu. You will get that the normal basic graphical infrastructure graphical window to configure your it will visible your Wi-Fi things and then it will install everything. But not every graphical card do not support with the basic Arc Linux. But once you install GUI, you can install drivers. You will get those drivers from the repositories. And the next thing I am checking the time. I am adding the time. NTP server for now. Time date CTL set NTP. I said I'm setting the time now. Then I'm checking LSBLK. It will show you LSBLK will show you all the disks which is available on your system. You can see that. From bottom, SO0 is my CD, SDA is my hard disk, which is a virtual hard disk. Then loop, that is a, which one is the load in now. So this is the one now. And next, we're going to use F disk, uh, not F disk, C, C F disk. C F disk will do everything to format and change the disks, and uh, you can make the partitions from that command set dev we are using sda here it is so i am choosing the dos partition here so you see that it's a 40 gb disk there and you see the bottom of the screen new quit help write commands so i'm creating the new partition now first partition i am creating efi partition that is a boot partition I am using 512 MB only 512 capital M if you want to gig capital G okay so I am entering now it's a primary partition so it you can see that it took the 512 MB of partition out from the total partition and it created as a Linux type okay then I am creating another new partition this one is my root partition and I'm giving to root partition 20 gig. This is enough for root partition on Arc Linux to install OS. So I'm doing that one now, primary. So we create a next partition. It will also create it as a Linux partition. Then remaining space I'm making as a home partition that is comes under home folder, like it's for user. You can, uh, if you want to create multiple user also, that is also comes under home folder, all the users. So this is for users purpose, their documents, picture, desktop, everything comes under. So that's it. I'm creating all partition. So after doing that, you must write this. Otherwise, it won't save your changes. So I'm creating right here. Enter. You must type S. Otherwise, sometimes pressing enter key, it will ignore everything and you, are, you won't save your changes. So I'm typed S, enter. So it's saved now. You can see the blue blue message on bottom. So then I'm quitting now. So I came back to my again. So if you see that LSBLK, it will show you all the partition which one we made from the SDA, whatever the from the hard disk. Okay, that's done. Partition done. And we ready. We need to format those disks. First, I'm making the EFI disk into FAT32. So MKFS dot FAT F32 dev s sda1 don't worry i will put all the commands in description so if if you want you can use those commands next i'm making those two partitions into ext4 partition those are linux partition yeah then mkfs 
dot ext4 dev sda2 so the sit is done sometimes it will ask you starting block and block just press enter it will take all default values so don't worry then sda3 that's it is done now format done then we need to mount our drives into our mount point so first thing i am doing mount i am doing root partition first root partition is our sda2 dev sda2 to m and t mount then i am making folder in the root folder mkdir m and t home folder so once it's for make home folder then i am mounting that our sda3 into home folder dev sorry okay mount dev sda3 to mnt home so i am taking that to that folder mounting that sda3 drive into home folder so that's done then we have to install our system now so we will install our our linux into that folders now for this we are using pack strap this is the command to install our c install this command uh, this will install is it will download all the os from the internet and it will install whatever we base linux so pack strap mnt we are installing that into our mount base mount folder base linux base linux and we are using linux firmware also linux firmware okay it's starting now so it takes nearly sometimes depend on your internet speed sometimes my one is takes 5 to 7 minutes sometimes 50 to 16 minutes so i'm pausing this video once is downloaded finished uh, downloaded and installed i will come back okay see you after some time hello guys yeah it's done now it took nearly 15 minutes uh 32 seconds so i'm switching into full mode now so you can see that here so bottom right hand side 15 minutes 30 seconds now i am doing what i am doing i am generating generating fstab file so we are using gen fstab so this is permanently writing our disks into the file so minus u mount point this is the mount point we are doing these are disk we mounted here so we are putting that redirecting into mnt we are putting etc f stab sorry okay it's done now if you want you can check cat mnt etc f stab so it will display it is displaying those two drives which is generated into f stab file then we are moving from our iso into our installed uh, iso to our installed arc linux operating system for that we are doing arc root sorry arc ch root root mount from mount point to we are doing bin the shell we are changing here bin dot bash shell so we are going from mount point to our os shell so you can see that root at arc iso so we are change our color root color so we are going into our bash shell then we have to create our local times from here we are doing all local settings like our language our time zone our keyboard settings and everything here so i am doing first is a local setting ln minus sf user you can press tab it will finish automatically zone info i'm in europe so i'm in london so london then i'm putting that 
settings into my etc file etc loc local time yeah cannot access it local time that is right it is local we change from there to there share zone info okay we will check okay i'm doing the file now no no local time sorry oh sorry guys here i put the wrong command that's why it's saying that so you i'll show you that uh, i'm going back one CDWR. sorry guys here is a mistake i'm doing so sorry this is not ls this is ln sorry so that's right sorry i'm extremely very sorry about that so this is a command i mistakenly typed it then we are doing the hardware clock setting h c l o c k clock synchronize we synchronizing our h w clock says to h c to utc i'm my utc i'm in utc time zone so again i'm doing some mistake again it's says to h c h w c l s says s y s p h c u t c okay that's it so you see the commands sorry for my type of mistake today okay then we setting locally we are editing our file so i do not install any editor yet so you can install vi editor or nano but here i am installing nano editor pacman minus s nano so i need to edit some locally local language files and those things so i do not install anything before so i am installing nano we are, which one we are editing is etc local legend file so you will see that here is all uh, your local settings which is a re regional settings you can generate you can check out the hash button so it will activate itself so i am doing english great britain en underscore gb so you can see that here this is the one i am doing here e this is the one so i am control o to save settings then control x to exit from there then i am putting my language into that echo lang language equal to en underscore gb dot utf these commands are very very good for you to follow i will put every commands in the description etc then local.conf that's it then we are need we need to configure our host name echo my pc you want if you want you can configure any name this it is no particular names for this etc then etc host name that's it then we have to edit our host file also no no etc host file so i am putting here 127.0.0.1 this is a loopback address you know that L local host dot local domain my pc so that's it control o to exit from here control o to save control x exit then we configure hostname file we did everything then we have to install network manager pacman network manager 
that's it we are using network manager then we have to enable our network service then we will install our grub so why we are, why i am editing uh, enabling network service once we reboot we need to get our dhcp server whatever it is from internet our network connections so it will keep the service running so then we can configure next section now we are network manager then we enable that then we're going to boot then we install we will create the user account then we will install graphical structure graphic user interface for desktop and moment okay it's nearly done now today's internet little bit slow that's why it's taking long time okay sorry yeah it's nearly done okay next i'm enabling service now system ctl enable network work manager the set is created the net and it enable the network manager now i'm con up to now we haven't configured any network uh, root root password so i'm configuring the password now Okay, I configured root password. So then we're going to install our grub now. So pacman minus s grub and I'm also installing EFI boot manager. EFI boot MGR. Okay guys, is I hope it will quickly. I don't think so. Then we will configure our boot manager to boot from the SDA1. So we will keep all our settings into our EFI partition. Then we will reboot. Then we will go using our, we will configure our user account. Then we will install some more basic uh, XFC desktop environment. So that's the MKDIR. Then boot iPhone EFI. In the file, then we mount our SDA1 drive disk, disk into this one. Mount dev SDA1 and put EFI. So we are mounting our that one to that folder. Then we are installing grub grub install guys this is a very thick this is a very difficult command for if you are familiar with linux it's easy to do that is it called x86 underscore 64 so efi funny efi directory equal to our boot directory boot efi then bootloader bootloader id re mova removable it will check everything it's installing if it will display the message is it perfect or is any errors generated come on Ready, grab, removable. Yeah, everything fine. I hope it takes some time. This is my one is a virtual one. I just gave the two geek, so that's why it's making long time. Then we will make grub configuration file. Okay, you see that installation finished, no error reported. Then we are making grub configuration role mk config as o then 
boot grub grub config dot cfg okay that's it then we will exit and unmount grub configuration file then we will reboot our system then we will create account and everything okay this is everything done now so exit from it we will exit from there again we come back to our normal installation installation prompt then we are unmounting you you mount minus r it will mount all the partitions and then reboot okay it's rebooting now once it's done we will create the user accounts and we will go through the next xfc desktop environment now okay just done everything done perfect i haven't seen anything errors or anything okay oh sorry the this guy I forgot to remove it Devices, optical devices. Sorry, guys, I need to reboot again. Okay, now it's done. Uh, okay, we is rebooted now, it's gone. So we are using root account, and the password is. Okay, we enter into root account now. Now I am configuring, I am adding the extra user account. So we will use that user account instead of root and we will give that account as a root privileges also. User add minus m minus g users to g. This is a group I am adding the user into s bin. Um, giving the bash shell b a s a bash and username i'm using arc again so username is arc that's it i added the username now then i'm creating the password for that user Okay, I created a password for the user. Then I need to give that user a sudo privileges. So for that, I am installing sudo now. Pacman ss sudo. That is why I am saying that Linux, this ARC installation will give you complete control of your system. So you know everything what you are doing, what you have to install, what you have, what you have nothing what you don't want so i'm editing that sudo v sudo's file now sorry no no v sudo okay sorry for my type mistakes lots of typing mistakes today okay here i am taking the comment out of from that wheel group which is i added the user into so you will see that the same configuration file in fedora and suze linux and some of deviants also so here i did that and i'm saving this file now and control x so we clear that one out we added the we created the user and we added the user into sudo's file and we done now now we are this is i'm suggesting if you are installing on the hardware 
uh, you can install your uh, Intel drives also. I, I'll, I will add all the commands into description, but here I'm not installing. This is a virtual box. So I'm installing basic for basic uh, Xog server and Xog display files, display uh, drivers. And then I'm installing XFCE desktop environment here. So sudo. So I'm exiting from here first. Exit. And then we can we will use the user account. Arc. So password. Okay. Here I logged in with the Arc user now, not the root user here. So I'm using sudo to install all the packages, whatever I want now. So sudo pacman minus s xogs. This is the basic display drivers for all linux systems xog xog server so first installing these ones now so this password for sudo okay it will take some time to download all those files sorry i entered wrong okay i'm just installing all default so s so it will download everything and it will install itself. So yeah, I hope it will do it very quick. Then we will install XFC desktop environment. Yeah, then we will install some more other. Oh, this video I'm finishing with only installing XFC desktop environment. In the next video, we will installing how to install long-term kernels and how to install the, some basic packages which one you most need and how to secure the system and what you have to do for that one so after that we will monitor how much ram it is using i'm particular i'm very confident it will use between 300 to 400 mb only for with the basic things so that's why i'm suggesting you will love this arc linux once you install and configure everything which one you need it's not like other system but it's good system and you will control complete control of your system on this okay guys it's still taking some time um i'm pausing this video i'm come back again okay see you after some time okay guys here is the installation done now. We are back. So I'm going to install XFC desktop environment now. I'm using sudo again pacman minus s XFC4 and I'm using XFC goodies also. XFC goodies. This is a basic packages it will install. XFC4 goodies okay it takes some time to download all the xfc desktop in a moment and after that sudo pacman sorry oh, today is i'm doing lots of typo mistakes sorry guys um that's it okay i'm entering to password now okay then i'm selecting all this one you can see that is a exo gaucon tuna these are the file manager tumblr xfc app finders and these are basic basic applications for xfc desktop environment i'm choosing all default here is also i'm choosing all default mouse pads and text editors everything here i'm using jack repository two providers available libjack c files those configurations so i'm using first one this is the default one you can use second one also there's a community install chain so that's it it's the 126 mb and then i will come back again okay guys see you after some time okay guys it's done now so it's the installation finished now now i'm starting xfc desktop command is sta or the start xfc4 so that's that's it we were starting sorry start xfc4 
ए और टी या स्टार्टिंग नाउ सो यू सी द ब्यूटिफुल एक्सेप्ट सी एयर मोमेंट इन ओल्ड एंड डेज दिस वॉज नॉट गुड बट नाउ इट्स एक्सलेंट यू कैन चेंज your settings everything here from here desktop display you can change your thing so i'm changing my original configuration is good configuration is is just one i will see that is that okay keep this configuration okay this looks better now so i am installing some more things after this one we installed desktop in a moment but our login screen is not done so i am installing login screen now so here is it is now sudo my login screen pacman minus s l i g h light tdm l i g h t d m g t k this is g t k it was built it's in That's it. Yes, it's very quick. It's a small package. So that's it. It's done now. Then I'm enabling this GTK after reboot. Okay. Sudo system ctl enable. Whenever it restart, it will ask lighttm. That's it. Everything done. Installed. so we will reboot again reboot so you'll see that is very quick it will boot and it will ask you to log in with your user account so our user account is arc a r c h arc so it's cleaning up all these files and everything so we we'll log in with our arc account now okay you see that this is a arc account this is a screen light is very speed and is very light you don't put any load on your system so my password that's it everything done and one more thing i will show you how much is load it is on system now so to do that i am using installing one package htop sudo pacman as h top yeah so solving dependencies yes is done okay everything done i will show you how much we are doing our load after the system you see that it's only 250 mb so thus guys that's why i'm suggesting this is excellent system with less resource you will use the remaining ram remaining resource to other applications so that's why i highly recommending to use arc and install yourself learn yourself you will familiar with linux you will familiar with arc and you will control your operating system that's it for this video in next video we will go through how to install linux lts kernels what we other extra softwares we need how to secure the system all those things we going to step by step in next video please feel free any suggestions for me or any recommendations for me any more videos on arc linux or any other linux if you want any more videos please put it in comments below so i will correct myself i will make more videos what you want how to do that Okay thank you guys please subscribe thank you bye